Thanks so much for coming, guys. Mm -hmm. Thank you for being here. Yeah. Um, so I'm with Ashley and Chanel, and um, we're here today like to talk through kind of what's probably been underlying in our culture and been our experience for years, mm -hmm. Long <laughs> for time. our yeah. whole lives, whole life. yeah. <laughs> which is like this topic of body image, mm -hmm. um, this topic of like really how to deal with that as a woman, how to, how to navigate that, how to work through it, our own personal journeys that yeah. come along with it. Um, but last week, um, this whole thing went down with Khloe Kardashian. You guys heard about it, you mm -hmm. saw. Um, where an unedited, unfiltered picture, <laughs> who, who would have thought, um, came out <laughs> and without her approval and she, there was backlash. Like everyone was asked to take it down. Her own grandma posted it. I can't imagine that that's like a smooth situation right <laughs> now. The family. Grandma, why? <laughs> grandma. Um, so like grandma had to take it down. Everyone that screenshot it or shared it like was asked to take it down. And so it was this big thing where um, like it, it felt like a way bigger deal than it even maybe mm -hmm. needed to be. Yeah. Um, and then she released this response of like, really like a lot of written words of what her uh, reasoning was behind it, kind of explaining herself. Um, it was just this huge deal. And um, I think it just points to like the fact that body image is so, is such a primary like thought for every single person out there. I'm sure, especially even more so for celebrities that are critiqued and criticized on a daily basis, um, especially for a family like theirs, you know, but um, it was just a really interesting situation. And so I'm really glad that we get to come together and talk today about like our take on that um, and even our experience with like body image and what we think of that, because we have this like unique perspective of, um, seeing it through a different lens, knowing who we are in, in our identity. Um, but that doesn't separate us from culture. <laughs> that yeah. doesn't separate us yeah. from like, oh yeah, actually I never struggled with that. Like we do. Uh -huh. um, and so we're going to talk about that a little bit today. And um, before we even get into the questions, like, did you guys have any thoughts on the Kardashian situation specifically? Like any, any takes or things that you wanted to share? Yeah. Uh -huh. I mean, I'm gonna be real. I yeah. didn't even think about it, or I don't really follow the Kardashian family, so this is something that I had to like search even farther into. Yeah. Um, and so it was just surprising to me. They're a very obviously well known from keeping up with the Kardashians, mm -hmm. and I feel like they're in everything that now. Thing. There's so many of them; they're all over the place. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, but uh, but yeah, I actually had to really look into this, and and just the fact that they're. We're, we're talking about, or this whole thing started over a photo, yeah. and then it was hard for me to even like find the photo. Of course, it's still up places, even though they ask people to take it down, people are still gonna be, I don't know, weird about it, and they think that they have the right to that photo just because it was online, and so I'm gonna take it, and I have that screenshot, and now I don't know if they wanna like hold it over someone or do whatever. Um, and so it took me a little while, but I was surprised at the photo. I thought it was gonna be, cause when we talk about body image or we look at unflattering mm -hmm. angles or whatever yeah. we wanna talk about. Yeah. Which we all have our own definition Oh, totally, <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah. And so I thought it was something like whenever I like like slump over and like turn my <laughs> head and like, I'll, like I look hunched over and I don't look like, like, or like a celebrity should look like standing up, doing whatever. Um, not saying that they all have to look like that, but just, yeah. it's the opposite of this like hunched over thing. When I saw the photo, I was surprised because it's her standing very naturally. She she's pretty. throwing up at, yeah, she looks, <laughs> yeah, she looks really great. Good. She looks mm -hmm. fantastic. I think she's like throwing up a peace sign or whatever, yeah. holding her phone. She just looks like a regular natural person. Mm -hmm. And so I was even surprised at just how regular and normal the photo looked. And I was really confused as to why there was so much uproar about all of this stuff. Yeah. I just didn't understand. Totally. Yeah. It was really interesting. So in her response, um, with she like wrote out like this huge thing it was like five mm -hmm. like carousel slides yeah. um, on Instagram. But she also like her response was to release a live video of herself mm -hmm. um, with minimal to no clothing, like proving her her body mm -hmm. like proving herself yeah and that part made me so sad mm -hmm. because I was like girl like you don't have to prove anything uh -huh. like you don't have to like like to come back from like any criticism or feedback that you got from that picture like this does not get you the win mm -hmm. like this doesn't like 
this still isn't getting you what you want, which is like people to lay off and people mm -hmm. to appreciate the, yeah. the work that you've done, the yeah. discipline that you've had or, or whatever. Like, Cause now it feels like you're life. over, you're even trying to overcompensate yeah. for all yeah. of these sorts of and things. It, it perpetuates the cycle mm -hmm. of like, yeah. I don't have anything to prove, but I feel like I have something to prove. So I'm going to try and prove it. Uh -huh. And like, then you're mad when people like, don't like it or mm -hmm. criticize what's put out there. So yeah. that made me sad because I was like, man, there's no, there's no win in that. There's no like, okay, like now people will appreciate me mm -hmm. or now people will like relax. Like yeah. it, it's just going to continue yeah. like in that cycle. Did you have any thoughts? I was also just confused on like, when I saw the pictures, she's so pretty. Like mm -hmm. what the heck? I'm like, yeah. I, wish, I wish you just left it alone. Yeah. yeah. Because then it would make us normal people feel totally. normal. Like totally. it was a nice picture by the pool, mm -hmm. nothing. It was innocent. Her grandma took the photo. Fun yeah. time, you know. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and it was at like a family, family function yeah. too. So those are normal photos I for mean, people my grandma to take. Has taken some. So many <laughs> Honestly, sometimes it's like when you ask someone else to take a picture, they get like the weirdest, like yeah, when you're the in show. the middle of a sneeze or like yeah. you blink and your eyes are like halfway open. Yeah. So um, yeah. It, yeah, it definitely should, like only proved the point that like no matter who you are, how much money you have, like you're gonna always struggle with something. Mm -hmm. And like there's only so much like you can do. Yeah. That's yeah. why we have yeah. to give our identities to like our identities in Jesus. Totally. And, mm -hmm. and if it's not, you're gonna keep going on this hamster wheel. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Where's my identity? I'm this, I'm that, you know, exactly. when it's, yeah. that's not yeah, that made me sad. <laughs> yeah, totally. Super sad. So for you guys, mm -hmm. Chanel, you go first. Yeah. Um, what has like journey looked like for you um, in regards to body image? Like, so this is Chloe. We don't know her, but yeah. <laughs> we're, yeah. there is a level of girl power that we yeah. want to rally around uh -huh, her. Totally. And like, we want her to be successful. Yeah. We don't want her to be sad or in this, in this cycle or, you know, making something bigger than mm -hmm. it is. But we all have our, our own journeys with um, body image. And, and as a woman, that's like ingrained in us from mm -hmm. like probably the day we're born. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> Close to it. <laughs> yeah. Um, so like, can you walk through like what that's looked like for you? Yeah, Especially sure. like maybe even how being a believer has affected you. Like if that came later on in life, I don't know all of your story. But, yeah, 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 for sure. Um, so I, ever since I was a child, I mean, I'm talking like I came out of the womb at nine and a half pounds. Yeah. and 21 and a half inches long like yeah. I was a big I yeah and my mom was not she was like five nine mm -hmm. and I don't know she was a fairly thin woman she was like fit normal I don't know regular size um, but I was just a really really big child everyone in my family is really really tall we're all very like athletic muscular people mm -hmm. and so I think I was just Jesus just made me to be that way so um, exactly big mm -hmm. bones big muscles all the things mm -hmm. so um, yeah, so I, I came out as a larger child and there has not been a point in my life since that I have not been really honestly larger than all of the other people that I know or that I've been around. So growing up in school, I was always the the real people noticed me for how tall I was first, but then also like how like my actual like size, what my body looked like. Um, and I have a sister, she's three years older than me um, and she's really, really tall as well, but she's a lot more thin, a lot more narrow. It took her some time to put on some weight and some muscle. And so, um, and so a, a lot of my friends, they would be able to share clothes with each other, share um, different, I don't know, things with their siblings. Um, but I couldn't do that because my sister and I were two completely different sizes. And so um, that made me very aware from a very, very young age that I was, that I looked very different from people. Um, and so, and, and where I grew up uh, in the a town was, I guess, like medium-ish, but a, there was a lot of focus on um, the the look of you, mm -hmm. especially going in towards high school. Yeah. Um, and so I think my, my parents were very aware of that too. And of course they want to raise a healthy child who is, who is active, who um, is, I don't know, cognitive in control of their body. I don't know. Um, and that just eats really well. Things like all things yeah. that affect like, well -rounded exactly health. a well-rounded yeah. healthy child. And so they put me into sports, which I really excelled in being mm -hmm. at, like naturally athletic. Yeah. Um, but even through that, I, sometimes I would take it to like wanting to be in sports so that I could be thinner, so that I could look like everyone else. Um, but that just never happened, um, which I, I took really, really, really hard. And 
thought of myself as um, thought of myself as ugly, thought of myself as fat, thought of myself as whatever negative adjective you want to put in there just because I didn't look like all of the other people. Um, and of course, when you're younger, you don't really talk about those things with your mm -hmm. friends. We're it's talking about this now exactly yeah. as like 20s, 30s, yeah. things that we're much more aware of now. Yeah. Um, but yeah, as a as a young high schooler, I didn't want to go around talking to my friends of like, hey, sometimes like I look in the mirror and I actually really don't like what I see. And like I try and pick and poke and prod. Um, and so I didn't talk to anyone about that. Um, and so it took me a while until I actually found a group of friends or just some people that I was comfortable with um, to actually talk about um, myself in a, in a way, firstly, Honestly, it was a, in, in a negative way. It was like, there was a group of girls where we were like, oh my gosh, like, I wish I just like, if my sides were a little bit thinner or like, if I had that like hourglass, hourglass, like bigger hips, like whatever it is. Um, it was, it, it started out negative, but then slowly as I grew older, it was, it was learning more about myself and the way that God created me. Um, and I think it really did take a turn when I became a believer and started to take my faith seriously because then I realized, okay, I'm in this body that God has given me, that God has blessed me with, yeah. that is healthy, that is um, functioning, that is able to move and to breathe and to do all of the things that a human being should be able to. It doesn't matter what size I am mm -hmm. in doing that. Um, and as I continued to play sports as I got older, I actually realized that I could use my size to yes. my advantage. So even as a kid, I learned that a little bit because I would wrestle with my sister, yeah. or wrestle with siblings, yeah. and I'd be I'd able to like win. pin them on yes. the ground. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And always win but because I was <laughs> um, because I was bigger. But as I got um, toward like high school, um, we played powder puff and mm -hmm. I was like out there like stiff arming people moving <laughs> everyone out of the way oh girl i used to play you in it's true yeah uh -huh. you yeah you crushed, you crushed <laughs> yes it. yeah and so even moving into college i um played flag football and really really excelled and loved it mm -hmm. because i was able to understand that god created me in the way that he did not meaning for me to look like anybody else yeah, or in order mm -hmm, to compare yeah. myself to anybody else and the way that i look and my strengths i can use them in something like sports i can use them in something mm -hmm. like um whatever it is mm -hmm. so that's, that's awesome. a little bit of my journey there's a lot more in there yeah. but yeah thank you yeah that's really cool i am um, i resonate with like the athletic part because mm -hmm. i think especially in like those middle school years and like high school years like totally. being the strong girl is not cool it's not <laughs> no you want to be like dainty yes. and small and into cute things no, but i was totally. that was never i wore basketball yeah. shorts um, for a large majority of seventh and eighth grade, just because I was always sweating, I was always playing sports, I was yeah. always doing things. Yeah. But yeah, yeah, it's not a, it's not necessarily the thing that everyone wants no, to be. Not the thing. Yeah. Not the thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I remember like, you know, you have those those moments where you're growing up where like someone insults you and like mm -hmm. literally you will never forget it for the rest of totally, your life. Totally. Yes. Like, I can laugh about it now, but like was not laughing mm -mm. at the time no. um but I was like I was a swimmer and so super like athletics were like the thing mm -hmm. and with swimming we also did like cross training so we'd be in the weight room and yeah. all that and like I could like bench more than the other eighth grade boys <laughs> <laughs> they, they weren't thriving in that time <laughs> yeah, right? um but I remember like the day where I went from swim practice in the morning to mm -hmm. middle school in eighth grade and I'm like doing my thing like putting in my books in my locker mm -hmm. whatever and this group of boys walks by and they started calling me roids like steroids like that was my oh my gosh because Whoa. like I was stronger than them and I had like more muscle definition than they did oh which now I would literally kill for that muscle definition <laughs> <laughs> so how the times have changed yes <laughs> but like I remember that because I felt so like like I felt so hurt by that because it wasn't what people wanted. It wasn't what they wanted to see. It wasn't what culturally was like feminine or attractive to the eighth grade boys I was trying to reel in, you know? Like, so glad that, you know. Yeah. No, thanks. no thanks. But like, it was, I just felt unwanted, like because of those totally. comments. And you feel like it, in eighth grade and like maybe just now, like honestly, what you said about like 
God in, like God intended for mm-hmm. me to look like this. Yeah. Like God intended for me to have this type of body. Like not that you just take what you have and you go like, oh, I can do whatever I want now. Yeah, and totally. Like, this is my body because it's not. But like knowing that there's intention behind the way that we're created, the way that we look, the mm-hmm. way that we reflect like the image of God in our different body sizes, in our different mm-hmm. body shapes. Totally. Like, can we not like find like joy and confidence just in that alone? Mm-hmm. Like um, without having this ideal thing that we need to work towards Mm -hmm. but like just figuring out how to be the best version like of of that Mm -hmm. you know yeah well how about you tell me your story (laughs) tell me your story (laughs) so growing up i gained a little weight and so in my culture i got called gordita like that was my cute little Mm -hmm. nickname yeah Um, i was worried you were gordita my aunt my aunt called me called literally called me chubby and so did my brother my aunt my brother called me chubby so just like (laughs) we all we all got it yeah yeah Yeah. and it's it's hard because like i know i can speak for my family but i know it meant it wasn't like you know, and you, me, yeah, you know, totally. it's like you uh-huh. kind of, you either get Flaca or you get Gorza, uh-huh. you know, yeah. creature for the Flaca, but I got the and, um, but I ran to sports too mm-hmm. and lost my weight from that, mm-hmm. but then really it hit me when I started, um, when I got engaged mm-hmm. and I started losing weight for the wedding mm-hmm. and then, um, I was literally eating 500 calories a day, oh, working, I lost the weight, Wow! Yeah. but I thought like, okay, when my wedding comes, I'm going to step on that scale, it's going to read the number that I want to see and I'm going to be happy, mm-hmm. yeah. I'm going to feel love for myself, like yeah. all of those things and um, there goes, lost the weight that I wanted, mm-hmm. it was literally like, as the wedding was coming up, like, I was even like a pound under than I, you know, like mm-hmm. it was cool. Yeah. And then on our honeymoon, I was like, why do I feel like this? Like, why don't I like these pictures? You yeah. know, like we're t- I look back at these pictures. I was a skinny legend. <laughs> like, I was, I was skinny like, I legend. Would go, but like my eyes, like the, mm-hmm. the way I viewed myself was so mean and yeah. so horrible. Mm-hmm. And like, uh, we moved and we went to Kentucky and we started, you know, we were, he was at school, mm-hmm. but, um, we were there and I started like gaining because we we're eating. Totally. And I was, wasn't was getting ready for the wedding. Mm-hmm. <laughs> was, I was eating more than 500 calories. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. But um, then I was like, I kind of let go of it until I got pregnant with my first son, Eli. And then I it, I started backtracking. Like mm-hmm. once he was born, I was like, oh my gosh, like I can't believe I look like this. I know. I also oh, had wow. no like community around me and be like you're normal mm-hmm. like your belly's gonna go down after six weeks yeah. or like this and that you know yeah. like I had no idea that like this is me forever mm-hmm. you know and like yeah you keep the habits that you you get from yeah. like you know your eating and everything and um that's when I just started being extremely mean to myself mm-hmm. and um I realized like because I, I was a Christian the whole time but I realized well, I needed to like keep my what is it have a renewed mind like what's mm-hmm. saying in romans you know yeah. about like keeping your thoughts captive. yeah do not conform to the patterns of this world but instead yeah. be transformed by the renewing of your mind yes mm-hmm. so having yeah. a renewed mind like i really was like i always heard that verse but then realizing yeah. like <gasps> i need to keep my thoughts captive uh-huh. and it's, it yeah. can't be all my thoughts because i think a lot but i start with one yeah. thought uh-huh. you know and it's yeah. from one thought to it's the next thought. <laughs> yes <laughs> to uh-huh. the next thought of like okay i got to be kind to myself I gotta start telling myself like I take inventory I started taking yeah. inventory of like how am I speaking to myself because the way we speak to ourselves is who we're gonna be who we are I was a person who believed a lot of lies about myself and the mm-hmm. enemy took those things yes. and ran with them yes, yes. yes. <laughs> yes. and I feel like as women that's kind of how he gets at us yeah. too is specifically in our bodies and the way that we think about ourselves is like you say one thing about yourself or you nitpick at this and then he takes that and blows yeah. it up and so you really do have to be careful of like when you have that thought like literally capturing it and saying wait a second no Mm -hmm. instead like what does god say about me instead like this is Mm -hmm. this i'm throwing this in the trash Mm -hmm. goodbye see you later sis but what it what does actually god say about me was the truth um about how he created me yes totally Mm -hmm. totally yeah thank you for sharing that Mm -hmm. that's really cool um i love like even the the scriptural like um perspective as you like journey towards that and keep pursuing health like, mm-hmm. because that's beautiful mm-hmm. like because it does it starts with our mind it mm-hmm. starts with our identity it doesn't mm-hmm. start with like i want to go work out like that if it started there it would be no big deal mm-hmm. but it's like this this deeper rooted thing yeah. yeah are there any um for you chanel like scriptural stories or references that like are kind of like goals or mottos yeah. or like 
things that you speak over this journey, over this this um, thing that we all battle yeah. with? Yeah, um, it's kind of hard because there's not anything in the Bible specifically yeah. that talks about body image or the way that we look or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, but the one that really sticks with me um, is 1 Corinthians 6 verse 19, um, where it talks about us being, um, it says, or do you not know that you are a temple? Mm-hmm. And so thinking about that and holding onto the word temple and like realizing that God lives inside of me. It's yeah, almost, yeah. it's tabernacle language. If we go back to the Old Testament. Hardcore. Yes, <laughs> Jesus or um, God, his presence resided in the holiest of holies, which was the temple for the Jewish people back then. And for something in the New Testament, something that we live by so closely to realize that my body is now the representation of that temple and that the Holy Spirit dwells inside of me. Yeah. It makes me think twice about certain things or the, the way that I speak to myself, the way that I yeah, think about my good. body. Um, because like who doesn't want to be a temple like somewhere where the Holy Spirit resides and lives inside of you and thrives like that's really cool to me I don't know if that's cool to anyone else but um, (laughs) but yeah instead thinking about myself as a temple so really trying to be now that I have a much better relationship with my body Mm -hmm. with my thoughts away um, the things that I put into my body um, I, I think about okay what would be sacred to, or what is honoring to put into my my temple. Mm-hmm. Um, it sounds almost weird and kind of mystical mm-hmm. that when you think of it like, oh, my body is a temple, but like mm-hmm. um, in, in regards to food, like what's the what's the best choices that I can make for my temple right now? And I don't always mean I eat 100% healthy. It's only broccoli and like <laughs> raw chicken with no, or not raw chicken. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, that ain't healthy. No, um, if it's like steamed broccoli and like, yeah. I mean, but also eat what you want to eat. It doesn't really matter. But like, I don't always eat the most or like what our culture thinks is the healthiest. I'm not juicing every single morning. I'm not slamming down green smoothies, things like that. Um, So I mean, if someone were to make me green smoothies every morning, I would would not complain. (laughs) Sure. It's the making of the It's it's, it's a lot. You got to love things to clean. (laughs) Exactly. but yeah, I mean, sometimes I eat that way and think, okay, this is the best thing for, for my temple, for my body right now. But also, let's be real, sometimes French fries are the best thing for my temple. And so, <laughs> it's... My exactly, temple. yes. <laughs> for my mental temple. Together. Exactly. Yes, yeah. mental and physical, yeah. too. Well, and it's fuel to do the things that, like, God is calling you to do. Totally. It's fuel to, like, be the person that he wants you to be. Yeah, like, yeah. There's multiple, like, purposes mm-hmm. within it. Yeah, know? there's a lot of different purposes. And so, um, so, yeah, I think for me really trying to focus on especially on days where I'm having a really bad day but like body image wise Mm, of I look in the mirror and I am not impressed with any of the things that I see whether it's my hair whether it's my clothes or whether it's something like I actually feel about my own body um I think trying to figure out what to put into my body to 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 step away from the mirror and step away from what I see, like you were saying, your mind almost kind of distorts Mm -hmm. what you see, um, to remove that and think, okay, not, not even focusing on that. What's something that I can do for myself that, um, that is, yeah, that's honoring to myself. Mm -hmm. And some days it's, Honestly, some days it's just eating. I don't care whatever it is. Like if I, if there's a day where I don't feel like eating, I don't know if we want to put this in because this might be a little like funky and weird, but um, if there's a day where I look at myself and I was like, you don't deserve to eat or like you shouldn't eat today, I'm, I'm going to honor myself by eating and, and remembering that I'm a human being that needs food in order to function. Exactly. So, um, so yeah, that's thinking of myself as a as a yeah. temple and a place where the Holy Spirit resides and, yeah. and not trashing it. Because I mean, like, mm. if God, if Jesus were to come into your house and kind of hang out with you and live there for a couple of days, it, that place would be spotless. Like, oh, yeah. you, there's socks behind the couch or like change underneath the yeah. like cushion or something like that. You would clean everything and try and make know. it. Exactly. Jesus <laughs> would know. He wouldn't no. even have to. You'd be like, hey, you know those twelve dust bunnies that are sitting in your closet back there. <laughs> you wouldn't even have to look. But you would want that to be the cleanest, like yeah. most honoring place for honoring. him to be. So, totally. um, yeah. I love that. I think like. Um, I really resonate with the Old Testament, like kind of look into <laughs> things because um, when I first became a believer, or even kind of in my process of like checking it out, <laughs> or like about like watching other people yeah. that claimed Jesus and claimed to follow Him, like 
I felt like there was something so different that like marked them, even physically. Like as weird as that sounds, like it was probably more of like um, a vibe than an actual physical look, but mm -hmm. it felt physical and obvious to me. Um, and I like I was reading through um, in Exodus and in, in the chapter 34 where Moses goes up Mount Sinai and he's mm -hmm. carrying the stone tablets and it's when God like gives him the, the Ten Commandments yeah. and he comes down and it says like he wasn't aware but his face was radiant mm -hmm. and everyone else was like well, like it was so obvious yeah. that he had um, met with God and it was so obvious that like he was in the presence of God mm -hmm. and I literally like there's so many like compliments that people give each other especially mm -hmm. girls like beautiful you're gorgeous you're cute blah mm -hmm. blah blah the word radiant to me feels so special it, it does feels yeah. like this is like this is a supernatural beauty and mm -hmm. it's not even like a body image correlated thing it's like an inside out like transformative kind of like you've been impacted by God yeah. and like for me, like when I look at the Old Testament and when I look at that chapter and when I even just consider like we can't separate ourselves from like culture and mm -hmm. we can't like the the reality is we all love Jesus and we all still struggle. With totally. Image. Yeah. Like uh -huh. we're not separate from that. We yeah. have not conquered that. No. Um, but I really like identify with wanting to pursue like radiance mm -hmm. and like wanting to pursue um, being radiant by being with God mm -hmm. like and I'm not Moses like God, God, God hasn't chosen me. What do you mean me. your face is beautiful? <laughs> God hasn't chosen me for that task mm -hmm. but like if I can even get like get some sort of um, impact from like the, just my time with him because mm -hmm. the more we spend with him the more time we spend with God the more yeah. we start emulating him just mm -hmm. by nature and like what more beautiful what more like radiant thing exactly like, could we could we portray it's you true. know yeah. When our eyes are on him, we forget about us. Yeah. And our eyes are like not focused on like fixated on exactly. our little flaws, yeah. you know, but yeah. like, oh, I'm in him. I'm radiant. Yeah. I'm beautiful in him. I'm, you know, uh -huh. at least yeah. that's what's. Yeah. <laughs> and in a strange way, that makes me almost really glad that when we get to heaven, when we meet Jesus, when we're there, we don't have physical bodies. Like, yes, our spiritual body, our soul is there with him, but we that's the time when we don't have to worry about mm -hmm. what we look like. Um, that has been taken away along yeah. with so many other things, and we yeah. just get to be in the presence of God and really restore that relationship yeah. and, um, and right being of where we're supposed to be. Yeah, I love that. So. Um, when you guys like think of just the messages that culture sends us in terms of body image, which there's probably thousands, <laughs> if not more, a there's day, a uh -huh. just <laughs> subliminally through advertisements, through social media, through our our own like mind conditioning of just looking at someone and maybe comparing naturally, like I, I do that. Mm -hmm. um, like, how do you, what do you see culture teaching about body image, and what do you see? from God like what do you see from scripture um, that maybe it's the same or different I'm guessing more different but like what do you guys see what are things that you notice in that you go first here. okay so I actually had two there's one that's like super negative mm -hmm. where it's like this is what you need to look like in order to be loved in order to be accepted you yeah. know mm -hmm in order for people to love you, you know? Yeah. I don't know why you get that message from, from perfection, yeah. you know? And then there's another one that I genuinely love, which is body positivity is yes. where I'm trying to get at. Mm -hmm. yeah. And there's, I feel like in culture right now, that's, it's a whole shift mm -hmm. in that. And I love that shift because it's reminding you it's like, of our, our flaws in a normal, you know, we're normal people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> I feel um, through just my time, like growing up, being a woman, like, I feel like we've probably seen the shift in culture of like mm -hmm. skinny used to be really cool mm -hmm. and now like super strong and fit seems to be normal. Mm -hmm. And yeah. even even now, like there's almost this like food freedom celebration, which can probably be taken too far. Oh so, totally. Like we yeah. have the tendency to take things too far uh -huh. in any capacity. Amen. <laughs> but like what's so like I said about this the other day, what's so interesting and what's so um not satisfying about any of those mm -hmm. is that they're they all are self-focused yeah. yeah like it all comes back to like me mm -hmm. like am i this am i this enough am i doing that like where am i on the scale looking at myself every day what mm -hmm. am i doing like it is literally so much about ourselves yeah. mm -hmm. and like anytime i pursue something with that much of like vanity and yeah. that much selfishness I'm not left happy, even if I reached yeah. the goal that mm -hmm. I had. Like, even if I got to my wedding later, I got <laughs> yeah. to, like, lost the pre-baby, yeah. whatever, yeah. like, a million things. 
Like it's so self-focused mm-hmm. and there's no satisfaction in that. Like you even talk, you could talk about the difference between happiness mm-hmm. and joy. Like mm-hmm. there can be a happy, like, yay, I did it. Mm-hmm. And then two days later it subsides. Like yeah. joy is like a different understanding of where our confidence comes from, who we are made mm-hmm. by, where our identity is, what is a priority. Like yeah. temple, we our body is a temple. Mm-hmm. So we should honor that. But that should never be like the main thing. That should just be like a thing. Yeah, totally. Uh-huh. Like, so I, I was thinking about that, like just the self focus of mm-hmm. culture versus, versus scripture and what, what we're taught. In that. Yeah. It yeah. comes to an end though. No, like, it does. Yeah. yeah. It, so what, what, one of, of that. yeah, one of the things I've always heard or that I've really liked in under trying to understand the difference between happiness and joy is that happiness is circumstantial. Yeah. So you can be happy around a certain thing. Like you can be happy that you lost whatever weight mm-hmm. you were trying to get to it. You were, you can be happy whatever weight you were pre baby or whatever. Mm-hmm. But once you get there, then what's after that? Totally. Do you have anything after that? Is that just a goal? So it's one of those things that's that's circumstantial. It's yeah. for a time, for a season. Um, yeah, and I agree with you that there's there's these two very polar opposite things that are happening. I feel like what I see from being on social media yeah. is that there's this this. It, like the it girl of like being super skinny fit you look good from all angles the like the big booty thin waist <laughs> sort of thing that's happening but then there's also this um this shift of like yeah w- w- women don't necessarily have to look like that we can also look strong we can also mm-hmm. look fit we can also look not fit and mm-hmm. still be very beautiful mm-hmm. um and so it's these two different camps that we live in and i think it's really hard to kind of figure out almost where like where do i land in this but also it's not it's not even necessarily where you land in this it's like i could be in this one i could also be in this one but Mm -hmm. outside of that my body is just my body it's not actually my identity Mm -hmm. and so it's it again it's like the happiness circumstantial thing is that your 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 circumstance is not your identity or what you put your identity Mm -hmm. into we put our identity into christ because Mm -hmm. he is the one um who calls us sons and daughters he is the one that has made us and created us Mm -hmm. um and and that's where we find our purpose and our identity in him um not in these two camps of what do i look like most Mm -hmm. so and even like those things are beautiful Mm -hmm. like to work out to do all those things mental health everything Mm -hmm. you know it can it's such a beautiful thing and i learned for my myself personally it's like if I, because of my wedding mm-hmm. <laughs> if i i didn't love myself then so like even now in my journey now i still have to lose the pre-baby but my baby's three years old my girl's three years old. <laughs> but like i'm learning if i don't love myself today for who mm-hmm. i am right now i'm not going to love myself yeah. then and exactly. you're not more lovable yes exactly yes, yes. Like, and it's like not... who is this future person like yeah. that future per- like that girl needs to be loved today yes in order to get to where i need to be yeah. and mm-hmm. i need to receive that love from god yeah. and yeah. like submit my you know my thoughts to yeah. my you know my life to him yeah that everything. future value or that future look does not determine your value today exactly because um, yeah. your value today is always a hundred percent in christ you are loved you are so valued mm-hmm. higher than anything that this world could ever offer yeah. you no matter Girl what preach. you look like no matter <laughs> what weight you are no matter mm-hmm. how tall you are no matter what your skin looks like what yeah. your eyebrows are what color hair you have like whatever it is on your body <laughs> exactly your eyebrows could be snatched but they could also be a little fuzzy but that doesn't matter because what you you are highly valued and highly loved and you were handcrafted and created to be the way you're supposed to be regardless of what you look like yeah